Um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, one of the things that we do within Rabobank in order to make teams go faster. <coughs> and one of the things is uh, the automation of development uh, using Rancher or Kettle. Um, I am uh, Erik Verhoen, as it says here. I'm working at the Rabobank since six months uh, within the continuous integration, continuous delivery team. And yeah, I hope to show you something about how we're doing uh, this and what we're making. And if you have questions, uh, the first part will be uh, really simple and uh, uh, process yeah, will be simple. Second part, second part may be technical. If you have any questions, just ask. <laughs> As Sander mentioned, uh, yeah, we work at TAS, uh, Test Automation Support, and we provide services uh, and assistance to all kinds of IT teams in the whole organization. Risk IT, PSI distribution, and basically every IT team can call us, we need help doing DevOps, we need help uh, doing continuous integration and continuous delivery. Short summary of, of the things we do, um, we help teams speed up their IT delivery, <coughs> and we maintain um, yeah, certain DevOps applications that teams can use for their process, and we assist teams in improving their DevOps practices. And yeah, this one is not a really a big shocker because Sander already showed oh, it. Sorry. <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> At the end of 2018, 90% of the teams can bring live code. What you did explain very nicely is that the week is very long for some teams, but very short for other teams, uh, which is where the challenge is because we want to build a central, no, not the central, we want to build one solution that teams can use in order to speed up their release process. But one team is not the other, and one release process is definitely not the other. So the solution we are making uh, should be diverse and dynamic enough to fit uh, that 90% of the teams, if they want to use uh, a development of a CI CD pipeline. But in order to do this, we basically want to enable teams to go faster. Go faster, go faster, go faster. And the reason uh, we are building continuous delivery pipelines <coughs> is to do so. I can il illustrate that with a uh, uh, simple example. We have, at the Bank we have two central uh, Jenkins instances, two big heavy Linux servers which run Jenkins, and many teams are reliable, or reliant on those instances. So, these instances are maintained by one team, one team of a few people um, which are the, they are taking care of the, those instances. If a team, if some <coughs> users want to uh, use a new plugin or a new feature or some other functionality, they have to request it. It's put on the backlog, and sometime in the future, hopefully near future, uh, the plugin is enabled, and teams can use the <coughs> functionality. Those two Jenkins Jenkins instances have one heartbeat, and teams have to live with it. And for some teams, that's good. They are used to this instance, they don't do anything fancy, they can uh, live with this instance. But other teams want to go faster, and they are smart enough and have the technology to go faster. So part of the 90% of the teams are happy with this instance. But other teams want to go faster. So we can do that if we have central Jenkins instances, which are maintained by six or maybe 10 people. So solution, multiple Jenkins instances. <laughs> And then teams have their own choice. Do we want a vanilla Jenkins, which we maintain and we can improve once in a while? Or are we creating new instances every day with new plugins every day and yeah, buff up Jenkins, basically? <coughs> Another advantage of multiple instances for every team is if you have two and one fails, <laughs> all the teams lose access. Yeah. And the whole, all the processes of those teams stops. Uh, which is dramatically in terms of cycle time and all the other metrics you want to measure. So this is what we do. The goal from the Rabobank is get 90% of the teams to deliver a line of code to production, and we want to provide users with a platform that they can use to customize uh, their needs, basically. And the way we do it is providing a CD toolset, building the building blocks that teams can use to <coughs> create a pipeline. And our focus is on 
these points. Uh, we want to not only create a pipeline, but also um, help teams use a pipeline, get into the um, decentralized way of thinking, um, help them yeah, use the pipeline, do everything as code, put everything in Git, um, yeah, basically get started. And we are also um, yeah, creating example pipeline in which teams can use. Teams can use our code, it's fully open, uh, and they can fork it, and they can make their own process and basically use or steal our ideas, ideas for themselves. Most important principle, everything is code. Uh, we put everything in Git, so it's accessible by everyone. All teams can use it, uh, can modify it, can uh, do pull requests. If they think we can do it better, please give the solution or give an uh, alternative and we look at it. And another big um, advantage of everything as code is that it's more secure. If you do a change uh, and something breaks down, you can easily revert your changes uh, and it's easily reviewable by other developers and other colleagues. So, our CD, CD pipeline is made up of these tools. Is there anything in that someone doesn't know? <laughs> Is it an airplane? It's an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I already thought that was unfamiliar. It was unfamiliar for me as well. But uh, extra deploy and extra release. Everybody. Yeah. Cool. <coughs> that airplane is container pilot. And I will show it in just a minute. But it's basically a piece of software that enables you to execute some uh, code before a Docker container is started and execute some other code after the container started. Mm. Then I will show it in more detail later on. Uh, you see here, any questions? <coughs> no? Okay. Um, in the left corner um, <coughs> is basically our infra. We use cloud forms to uh, request Red Hat servers uh, in our data centers. <coughs> it's all premise. We use our data centers in Best and Boxel to host our machines. Uh, Ansible to provision all the machines uh, fully automatically. All code and applications are uh, <coughs> centralized on Bitbucket or Nexus. Code in Bitbucket, artifacts in Nexus. And on those servers, um, uh, they run uh, Rancher and Docker. Docker as the smallest container part. Rancher which orchestrates the container. And within those containers, we now offer uh, Excel Release, Excel Deploy and Jenkins. And that means that when teams get started with our pipeline, they can create their own Jenkins, Excel Deploy, and or Excel Release servers out of the box instantly. And this is basically uh, the process that users have to follow. You have to pull some code from Bitbucket. Uh, they have to run one single script with the parameters uh, uh, that they want. How many hosts and agents do you want? Uh, disk size, uh, memory, all that kind of stuff. Uh, then it takes 20 minutes. This is happy flow. If there are more users requesting instances, then it can take a little longer. But basically in 20 minutes, uh, you have your, your platform, you have your cluster, which consists of uh, three servers, yeah, three full Red Hat Enterprise Linux, seven servers with Rancher and Docker provisioned on it. And it looks like this. Yeah, when you run the script kettle.sh with the uh, parameters that you want, what basically happens is that the script does a call to Cloud Forms and it's saying, well, give me these machines with this disk, disk size, uh, this memory, all the details that you have provided. Cloud Forms then <coughs> says, oh, okay, uh, here you have three servers. When that is completed, it does a call to Ansible Tower which provisions all the machines with Docker. And after that, one of the machines will be running Rancher server, which basically uh, uh, instructs the other agents to do all the stuff that they need to do. And this is what you get when you run the script and everything is exec executed successfully. <coughs> and then you're free to go. Then you free to go. Free to uh, start all the applications that you want. And in our case, that there will be, among others, Jenkins, XL Deploy, and XL Release. But these three 
these three tools are the tools we now uh, offer and we maintain and we uh, continually improve. Any questions up to this point? Yeah. What do you do, uh, use as a database for the rent check? Um, <coughs> I think it's a database for rent check. Yeah. Uh, let me. It's a MySQL database. But just a MySQL database, which runs on the host. Yeah. Okay. Um, does that mean that every team has its own set of infrastructure and first? Yeah. Are they? Um, Responsible for, for it to be well, uh, within the guidelines of the company, compliance, etc. Um, we are offering out of the box compliance, but with the notion that if something is changed, uh, as a team you have to be compliant. But we are providing um, yeah, guidelines basically on how to be compliant and make it as easy as possible. And do you? Has the team maintain a part of this uh, stack, or is it theirs? Theirs. Okay. Yeah. So we, as a team, won't be a bottleneck for <coughs> any uh, troubles that comes with this stack, with this cluster. And if there's an issue with Jenkins, for example, Jenkins broke down, kill it and create a new one. We're advising teams to have everything as code, so your whole build process and Jenkins jobs should be defined or we want it to be defined in Jenkins files. Mm -hmm. So if anything breaks down, remove it and start anew. And some teams are already doing that and some teams have great difficulty understanding what a Jenkins file is. Yeah. But that's part of the challenge. Let alone how to write them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is schematically yeah, how we build it up. Um, the whole pipeline is located in three locations. <coughs> all the Docker images are here on Nexus 3. Uh, all code is, of course, in Bitbucket. And runtime is on redeployable Linux on platforms. Um, what happens is, yeah, I'll get to that later, to that uh, image. These are the three uh, tools we offer now uh, with uh, yeah, some features. We're actively improving Jenkins uh, currently. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the most the tool that's most requested from users and from teams. So our attention goes to uh, um, a decentralized Jenkins uh, <coughs> central time. A lot of uh, yeah, we do a lot on it. It's already fully configurable as, uh, using Groovy files, which I also show later on. Um, it pitches into our LDAP authorization cluster. So you just provide a user which can talk to the LDAP cluster and then everybody can log in if you have the right LDAP credentials. Uh, we have the possibility to dynamically create agents. If your Jenkins master um, needs extra capacity, you just can create an agent which automatically contacts Jenkins master mm -hmm. to pick up jobs and to yeah, do stuff. Uh, Fortify is already, is already finished. Um, within the Rabobank, we have a central instance of Fortify, central instance of Jenkins, of, uh, sorry, of Sona. Oh, okay. And teams can use that. And we just implemented the feature that they can use it out of the box uh, from a decentralized Jenkins. <coughs> and persistent data if you want it. So if you kill your container, uh, if you have data being stored on the container, uh, then you can use it again. But as you should do everything from code, this should not be necessary in a uh, truly DevOps uh, situation. And for Excel deploy and Excel release, um, we also add up authorization, automatic key management, and also persistent data. And Excel release also being fully configurable as code using the X file, which is a JSON file, I think, or is it YAML? Groovy. <laughs> so we're building, <coughs> we're offering a catalog, a range of catalog. And also for the catalog we have a few core principles. Uh, number one, a proper first experience, that is key. If we want teams to go faster, they should be enthusiastic uh, to use the platform. We should make something that gives teams a good feeling and that they are willing to use <coughs> or willing to invest time in. 
So that's really important, and if the first experience is good, then teams can go on and uh, do other cool stuff with the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, second, less is more. It should not be, t be too intimidating. That's why we started with only three tools, Jenkins, Excel Deploy, and Excel Release. Um, and of course, this can grow uh, in a matter of time. And last, configuration as code. We are, for every tool we make on the platform, we offer the possibility but the, we offer the possibility to fully configure it from Git, basically. And it looks like this, as of now, yeah. with a few Jenkins instances, <laughs> or one Jenkins, one Jenkins that is that, that has persistent data, uh, Jenkins slaves, extra release, extra deploy, and what is also a cool thing to uh, show, we have a. Um, Microsoft VSDS agent, also available in the catalog. When teams use Microsoft tooling, Microsoft TFS, for example, mm. does everybody know TFS? Yeah, but that's all Microsoft tooling. Uh, if you want to have extra capacity for your Microsoft uh, pipeline on TFS, you can just create a um, Microsoft agent on Cattle for now. You have to provide a token, uh, a token and an address, and then it automatically announces itself to TFS. It says, hey, I'm an agent. I have this and this. Uh, I have this software. I can do these kinds of jobs. And then TFS says, well, OK. If I have a job, I'll call you. And then the jobs will be executed on Cattle. <laughs> And, of course, this is um, <coughs> continually under development. Um, this is a representation of uh, ready pieces of software. Uh, so now we are continually developing on Jenkins. If we make a new feature and we implement it, uh, after we merge it with master branch, users can use it. And, yeah, so users always have the, uh, the possibility to use the latest uh, features. And of course, users can, teams can add their own uh, catalog items to the catalog after a pull request. Yeah, so this is uh, basically what, this is what happens when you start a container. A uh, container pilot I was talking about, uh, when a user says, I want this item, for example, Jenkins, and he adds some configuration into the Rancher uh, overview. It pulls the Docker Compose and Rancher Compose from Git. Uh, the, the Docker image is pulled from Nexus. <coughs> and what, done ha what then happens before Jenkins is started, the container pilot says, wait a minute, I have something to execute first, the pre-start. It pulls that code from Git, executes it, and then the container is started. And the use of this um, is basically what we what we use it for configuration to install configuration on the Jenkins container so that we don't have to do that manually after the container is started. So it's run inside the container. Uh, it's container pilot is a piece of software that's installed into the Docker image. So when you run the image, mm -hmm. it says, "Wait a minute, I have something to do first and it does a call to I think uh, a pre-start script. <coughs> And in our case, that pre-start script executes our own pre-start, our customized pre-start script. And when that's finished, it goes on. And after uh, the signal start has been given uh, and it's running, then the post-start is executed. All happening in the container. All happening in the container. <coughs> and eventually, uh, it says stop container, but you might not want to stop it. But just to close off the flow. Mm -hmm. You use uh, Nexus as your uh, image yeah. uh, store, but mm -hmm. not Docker Hub or something like that, your local? Uh, no, we, lo we use our Nexus tree for our Docker images. And we have a, a process in place that if users want specific images from Docker Hub, um, yeah, you can build it and push it to Nexus. That's, uh, that's possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear beer. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can show you something about, uh, yeah, just 
show you how to create your own Jenkins instance. Yeah. Sander, do you have Chrome on this? Nee, but it's Edge. Edge. <laughs> I don't know if it's interesting. Can't help it. It's Windows 10. Yeah, yeah. Super yeah. 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 Uh, I requested this yesterday, so this is a fresh Red Hat Enterprise Linux server, and it's coupled to my LDAP account. So, boom, new Jenkins, uh, sorry, Ranger environment, uh, all mine, I'm fully responsible for this instance, um, and I can do with it what I want. You can see this one has one host. But of course, you can uh, you can add more or you can request more uh, when you request it. Is have anybody not really familiar with Rancher? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, this is basically this is my my computer, my computer spinning in the data center in Best or Boxel. I don't know. It doesn't matter for this use case. Mm -hmm. And it's work house <laughs> Running on this are a few. Uh, basic stacks in order to make the whole infrastructure work. Uh, we have here a stack called console. The console is automated service discovery. Uh, it's spinned up automatically uh, yeah, to recognize other services. <coughs> Some rancher specific stuff, health check, uh, networking containers. Oh. Networking Don't services. Mean. All needed to yeah, run your stack. But you don't need to worry about it. That's the most beautiful part. So here we have our catalog with all the stuff yeah, that is already supported. And let's say I want the Jenkins instance. Now we have some readme. What is Jenkins? Uh, how do we configure it? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We can give the name and the private registry. Registry. If you want to use another one, uh, you can configure it here, and then it will pull it from uh, another registry. But that is not normally needed. Mm -hmm. And this part is the most important part, I think. In the Jenkins init URL, uh, this refers to a Git repository which contains all the specific Jenkins configuration, and which also contains the external. Uh, hooks, so the pre-start script and the post-start script I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. and it redirects here. <coughs> oh. Yeah, um, so among other things, you can just specify which kind of plugins you want in your Jenkins instance. Just add them to a list. It's simple text file plugin. Uh, semicolon version and it gets installed and yeah let me show you the hooks now I know this is all new code for a lot of you um, but this is but what is executed before Jenkins is started and what it does here is it sets some it basically sets some variables replaces that variables in some groovy files and the Groovy files are installed in Jenkins. That's basically what it does. Mm -hmm. Then Jenkins starts, it sees the Groovy files, it executes the Groovy files, hence your whole Jenkins instance is configured. And that's, that is the part of uh, yeah, these files. Here you can see all the variables you can use um, as a user, which you can set, which you can make your own unique configuration of Jenkins. And let me scroll down. Yeah, and this is the part where predefined Groovy scripts are installed in Jenkins, mm -hmm. in the container. And once they are in the container, the scripts, 
we basically um, substitute environment variables uh, with user-specific configuration. <coughs> so when this script is ready, the Jenkins container, before it started, contains a lot of configuration files, all fit to user needs, in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Why don't you put them in environment variables before you start the container in Docker? Because most of them, I, I think, are mm -hmm. environment variables, mm -hmm. and so yeah. you can even put them in kettle as well and just run the Docker container and it picks up the environment variables. But why do you choose this over that? Um, using the Groovy files, uh, we make it more modular. So you can specify uh, as usual, I want this feature and this feature. And um, therefore only a few, uh, not every feature is installed. Uh -huh. So if, if this list grows, for example, mm. um, not every time you create a new Jenkins, all the features are installed. So only the things that you need will be in the, um, yeah, in the running Jenkins container. Mm. Yeah, and I think, yeah, yeah, here it is. Hey, can't I? Now here, we can make it bigger. <laughs> but in here, you can specify your the, the configuration that you want. So an LDAP user or a Nexus username, if you want Jenkins to contact the Nexus. Uh, some Sonar configuration, uh, slave configuration. This might be fun to do. So it's just a switch, actually. Um, it's default uh, is zero, so no possibility for Jenkins slaves. Uh, let me set it to one because I want to use it. And then we launch. And what it then does, it starts with Jenkins, plus one sidekick container. It's a secret handler if you want to use uh, passwords or other uh, secrets. We have a way for that, uh, so you don't have to um, add it in plain text. Yeah, yeah. active, active, uh, accessible through a load balancer. You have to wait a while. It does have to do some configuration. Maybe I can... Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. just skip past. But it's downloading all the plugins. Yeah, installing all the plugins. Mm -hmm. Waiting for Jenkins to start. Yeah, you can see it's starting some Ruby scripts, basically the uh, configuration of the Jenkins instance. Mm -hmm. No save. <laughs> yeah, and this is uh, your, your own uh, private Jenkins instance or for your team or <coughs> whomever you want to share it with. And you can see I, um, I activated the Jenkins agent uh, switch. And let me check if that's done properly. So it should have created a Jenkins slave user in order to manage the, the agents. Yeah, well, like that, it did. If I did, if I hadn't uh, switched that switch, um, it would not have created this user. Yeah, this is the this is your final Jenkins. But what if I want to actually make use of that agent? I can just uh, start one. Here, the only thing I need is the master URL from uh, Jenkins, which can be retrieved dynamically, but that are some next steps. Add it into the master URL. Everything is uh, filled in by default, so it should work out of the box. And launch. Boom. 
already running connected and here it is offline for now initiating yeah. active slave <laughs> and if you want more uh, you can just uh, scale up starting now these are really lean uh, Jenkins uh, slave images but teams can of course add their own software to their own slaves so it fits fit for their own uh, jobs basically Boom. yeah then a few seconds and they then then they turn online hmm. question yeah is there a cattle plugin for Jenkins so you can automate that part again there is yeah <laughs> there is uh, I think a cattle plugin yeah, it can be. I think it can be automated. Everything is automatable. <laughs> oh, that's not automated. Hey. Okay, back to the slideshow. Question. Question here. Hmm. Sorry. Question. question here. Oh yeah. Uh, one question. Yeah. Um, in this uh, process, uh, you have uh, access control workflow or something in order to you know, like uh, give this control way of provisioning of uh, environment for a particular person. Is it LDAP only or there is other thing also you apply? Sorry, is it? Is it L through LDAP only that whoever has the uh, uh, authorization, uh, um, those people only can request for this environment or at the later stage, let's say I'm employee of Rabo Bank and uh, I just have Edlab access and I go and request for a new environment and I keep on doing that, right? So there should be some control somewhere. I don't know, that's what my question actually, how you're yeah. making that. Uh, yeah, it is locked, uh, whoever we are request environment, um, because you are requesting a service on your own personal Edlab account. Yeah. So I don't know if there is a measure in place, but if you're requesting a lot uh, of it, uh, it is recognized. They just chop off your head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? And they just chop off your head. I don't know, I haven't been there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but so far, uh, okay. yeah. You uh, can it's, be, it's being registered uh, per server, it's being registered who pays for it. And currently, we're not in the process of uh, billing to any parties. Um, yet. <laughs> No, but the, the 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 software repo of of Cattle Rancher, that's open source uh, uh, in our organization, of course, huh? and the servers, so the the Linux hosts, though those are text yeah. within the organization. So everything that goes on it, that's from uh, that we develop and we offer to the departments, that's for free. But yeah. mm -hmm. the, the only thing we ask is that you help contribute, otherwise you have to pay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's future. <laughs> Yeah. Are you uh, providing uh, availability throughout uh, the load uh, layers? Um, your uh, your hardware, uh, your uh, infra layer? Because I only see one box that's provided, so that would mean that the availability is uh, assured there. Um, you mean if there are any options to customize the hardware requesting? Or how, how do you. Um, provide availability to your customer that mm -hmm. the box is always up. Um, maybe it's a single box. Well basically basically we don't provide it because it's it's the customer who requests the box and this environment. And if he wants mm -hmm. three boxes then and he has to set it up like uh, uh, well that, that his services fail over. Um, what we try to do is to and minimize the failure domain by giving every team his own infrastructure. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for setting it up, and if it fails, only infrastructure for that team fails. So there are not that many teams affected. But you can set it up, well, the way you want it. This time he only requested one machine, but he could have requested three or four or maybe 10. And well, basically we do have multiple data centers. So we could, in theory, I think we didn't build that yet, but, um, um, well, uh, spin up some machines 
in the one data center and some in the other. And then Rancher takes care of the load of services. Mm. So you have easy job. Uh, well, basically, we don't want to be uh, part exactly. of it. Exactly. Yeah. No bottleneck. No, no, and on the other hand, it's the, our Git repo and our Nexus environment are high available, mm -hmm. and everything is in in uh, in uh, source control. So if it goes down, just spin it up in the other data center. Yeah. So th there's a fast recovery before uh, before high availability. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well, of course, it's not always uh, not Thanks. always fun and games. Uh, there are some challenges. Uh, one of the things that we, for example, need to do is we have to eat our own dog food. We have the things we offer uh, in order to see if it really works. Uh, and also to find out if there are any uh, yeah, areas of improvement. We now rely on feedback from our users, from the teams that actually use it. But we should, I think we should also use it and create our own release process in this uh, continuous delivery pipeline. Uh, and that sends out a signal that we trust our project and that we uh, think it's uh, good enough to use it 100% of the time. And another thing is that we need to improve some uh, reli reliability and stability. Um, if you like if you start or launch a product which teams can request and request and request, um, the instance providing all the, uh, the the service providing all those instances can get uh, yeah, really busy. And we found out that there are a few stability issues uh, if a lot of people are requesting uh, machines and services, mm -hmm. and yeah, that led to some outages and some uh, errors. Um, yeah, but we learned from <coughs> them, and we're now in the in the process of um, how can I say it? Where where to go next? Uh, should we keep using uh, Cloud Forms and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or should we uh, go to a more stable uh, provider? For example, should we move to Azure? But if we if we go to Azure, that brings a whole uh, mm. lot of other issues and questions and challenges. Uh, so it's not an easy um, objective. It's not easy to make a decision from today on out we're going Azure or we uh, do something else. So, yeah, that are a few things we need to uh, think about. Mm -hmm. You have identified the bottleneck. We have, for now, we have identified the bottleneck. Of, uh, for requesting the machines, you mean? Oh, well, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't say for sure that we have 100% identified bottleneck. There are some ideas, but uh, yeah, we're in the process of uh, improving it. But that's, that is something we're still work, yeah, working on. Yeah, question. Um, seeing as the teams can uh, request their own uh, XL release, XL employ, uh, and can they use those to go to production? And if so, how do you manage that? Uh, the right rights are there. That if the DNS changes need to be there, how that how does that work? Uh, do you mean security compliant wise? Or yeah, but also like like uh, I assume that if I say I'm gonna start a new Java application now, I request this. Uh, mm -hmm. I uh, configure my uh, deployment in uh, Excel release Excel deploy. Then of course it needs to land on something, mm -hmm. and that probably needs a. Uh, Maybe it's a load balancer, DNS change, etc. Cetera, uh, cetera, because yeah, um, I did not see that in this uh, story, so I assume that's not part of the Cattle platform. Uh, that of course, eventually, that's part of the Cattle platform, and uh, that was one of the challenges uh, we had in the, the past few months. Basically, get to production. The reason you want this is to eventually put your application onto production, and uh, that's where we discovered that there were some uh, major differences in priorities between teams because we are making uh, this continuous delivery pipeline which is our top priority uh, but not so much uh, for other teams mm -hmm. and there was a mismatch in uh, not, not a mismatch but yeah a difference in uh, where to go so that was a challenge to actually get to production 
we now we are now therefore that a team uh, is almost 100% using the platform. They only need one feature uh, in the Jenkins instance, and then they can uh, yeah, use it all the way. Then they're ditching the centralized uh, Jenkins and Excel deploy, and then they can yeah, do all their stuff fully uh, decentralized. No. Question? Yeah. Uh, like some uh, in, in your organization, someone wants to onboard uh, their uh, applications into the DevOps uh, one. So how do you make assessment or uh, do you make any assessment or how uh, do you do kind of uh, uh, discussions with the team and then how do you suggest that yeah, they, they, these are the, some of the features which are available which is the best fit for you or what was the rationale behind? What the best feature set is for specific teams? Yeah, specific teams. Mm -hmm. some, some, some teams are quite may not be aware, they just try to go and uh, request what they want but do you yeah. do any kind of assessment before you give access to the environment or requesting it? Yeah, maybe Sander, uh, you can say something about that. Now the repository yeah. is open. It doesn't. It, it's even public uh, within our organization. There's no. You don't need special access to get mm. to the repo, so everybody can use it. And even I spin one up, even though I'm not technically skilled that much. So, um, and we offer consultancy with it. So people uh, and there's a lot of documentation with it. But if people want to start themselves, that's no problem at all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I I'm seeing more of uh, in terms of ways. So so uh, is there any, I mean, like when when you're requesting for the request, so you create a certain template where the user has to fill certain information. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, someone wants to onboard their applications, they want to use, uh, set up their pipeline. Uh, during that time, will you give any kind of insight that uh, this could be the, uh, I mean, you have a hell lot of cat catalog available, mm -hmm. but do you make any suggestions? For them to pick it up, this would be the best candidate for you. Yeah, this is, uh, through the consulting services, we we offer advice and help them, okay. and make make sure that they can be uh, can start as f soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah, they they are really sitting with the team and discussing what does your process actually looks like. What do you need? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes teams request uh, say we want Jenkins to do this and this and this yeah. with this plugins and this feature. But yeah, maybe you don't need all that features, and you can do it with only this plugin. On the other hand, th it we do suppose that there's there's the ambition in line management and in, in in the organization to do automation, and that they're willing to invest. Mm -hmm. So we do requ request a certain <coughs> amount of maturity to start. And of course, we offer courses, and we have a plural site subscription for everyone if they if they want to. And mm -hmm. uh, d d we we point people to to uh, sources on the internet. But if uh, we're not put, uh, we won't be the, uh, taking people by the hand all the way because then we won't scale to 365 teams. Yeah, yeah it's just not feasible. Uh, so a question on that though: How big is your team? Our team, we're uh, the whole of test and automation support is 80 people, um, but there's also the performance competence center within, which has performance engineers, uh, which are uh, uh, working within the teams uh, for a specific uh, from a specific role. Uh, the uh, people working on on this. Uh, including the uh, people doing workshops, uh, doing consulting, uh, building the pipelines is uh, 45, yep. 45 to 50. Yep. Yep. So, uh, from a technical perspective, like Rancher, Capital, yeah, Container Pilot, and all, uh, did you have some uh, uh, like product evaluation or comparative analysis uh, which other open source is better or bad in the sense? Any, any idea on that? Uh, I can, when I got at the Rauwag, it already was, the, these tools were already chosen. Okay. But maybe someone in the back, maybe Harm again? I didn't get the question, it was hard to follow up with it. Was question, I the question is like the, the selection of tool. Uh, uh, How that uh, happens? Yeah, um, well, some some well, you have some comparative Well, um, it's a bit hard to say. Well, I would almost pass it up to <laughs> Jan, but um, <laughs> can, you, can you can you know something? Nah, I think that's I'll catch it. It was mostly because a couple of guys knew this too. 
<laughs> yeah, but but also we did also look into Kubernetes, yeah. and the syntax of Kubernetes was more complex, and the Rancher syntax is like Docker Compose, which is kind of low barrier, and therefore we chose for ease of use instead of feature rich richness. Yeah. This is. You can run <laughs> half on half on halfway. Yeah. We uh, had a look at OpenShift as well yeah. because it was being promoted from our infra department. And still, then we said, okay, uh, Ranch uh, seems to be easier to use for development teams than uh, OpenShift is. Yeah. So we reevaluated and we continued on using uh, using Rancher. And when working on the containers, we decided, okay, before a container has to start. We had to do some some things, so we were just looking like, uh, what can we use for this? And then container pilot popped up, and we started using that. So it's all like series of events. It's pretty much agile. We picked some <laughs> tools and we built and we tried it and it worked and we continued. And if next next month there's something that's really cool and much more capable, <laughs> you throw it away, yeah, build yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, question here. Yeah. Uh, so what if a development team wants to use a server such as a database, MySQL, NoSQL, mm -hmm. key value, mm -hmm. or a queue, or a load balancer, do they have to set it up themselves on the hosts, or do you provide them managed services, something like that? Uh, in order that if they want to run it directly on the host, or as a container in the cluster. Yeah, that's the question, how do they do that? Uh, you're free to, <coughs> to build your own containers and run it on the cluster. So you're running databases in containers? If a team chooses to do so, then of course they can experiment and they can they can do so. And what's the alternative then? Connect to uh, uh, go mm -hmm. on the way they used to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just connect to some cluster or, or yeah. Yeah. Well, set, set of VMs with a cluster that you get from another team. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but then you do need a lot of Linux knowledge within all those teams, I can imagine. Or um, yeah, there needs to be and there doesn't need to be in some sense. Uh, through cloud forms, you can request uh, uh, your whole cluster with Rancher and Docker and the whole shebang. But you can also request a single Linux machine. And if a team is skilled enough with Linux to do that, then they are able to do so. Um, and if they want to run something on that, then yes, they can. Yeah. Yeah, basically, we, we still have our infrastructure department, which uh, offers databases uh, on various platforms like okay. Oracle or uh, the Microsoft databases. Mm -hmm. So you could hook up those databases uh, from a, from inside a stack. You can just access them. And the same you can do uh, like using a Rancher stack um, for development purposes, so the CI/CD. Uh, purposes, but deploy mm -hmm. your final uh, unit of work to fix the infrastructure. That's that's an option as well. So yeah. you can make all kind of combinations. Yeah. There, there is no no SQL centralized offering from uh, infrastructure at this moment. So they're looking into Cassandra if, if, and yeah, okay. uh, from a service based perspective in Kafka, but uh, uh, nothing else. So that that's something you need to build yourself. There's no MongoDB team. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, question at the back first. first. Yeah. Um, so um, if you would compare uh, Ranch to uh, uh, kind of a mature uh, orchestration uh, platforms or tools like the Kubernetes, um, <coughs> would you uh, compare it? And what would be lacking in, in Ranch? I don't have experience with Kubernetes. So basically, um, Ranch uh, can be put on top of Kubernetes. The other way around. Kubernetes on top of Rancher. You can, uh, you, could, you can choose to orchestrate your containers using Kubernetes on, on top of Rancher, so you can have multiple Kubernetes clusters, clusters running and yeah. have a kernel of a Rancher orchestrate them all. So that's basically yes. it. And, and <laughs> but they choose the choose kettle as an orchestration system, but you can also use um, Kubernetes and another one? No, Docker Swarm, probably. Yeah. Swarm. Yeah, yeah, I would recommend Swarm, but there's quite some <laughs> <laughs> options there. Right? You use Rancher as a start and then just Everybody hates choose whatever platform you need so they can easily switch to Kubernetes if they want to. Okay, makes sense. I have another. Oh, the one behind you. Yeah. Processes for them. Is it shared between the uh, hosts? 
it is just dedicated to one one. The container, Shmi? No, the persistence volume. Um, NFS server or just no, where's the volume? Uh, it's you are able to share it between uh, containers. But when you sh when you spin up um, a container and you want it to be persistent, then you have to specify the location of your uh, NFS share. Mm -hmm. um, and you that's um, using that you can share it among different uh, containers. Different hosts also, right? Sorry? If container goes to different hosts, I can also use the same. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so, yeah. You use NFS, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the picture where you spin up that container and uh, that one. This one. Yeah. So you pull in code. In just this picture, to me, was like, okay, so where's your artifact? If, if you're building a Java application, say, so so your artifact would be only built somewhere in the container, and then. Uh, yeah, the artifact will be built. It's up to the team where the, what they do with it. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't know what teams are doing with the containers. Yeah. Okay. That's so up to them to configure that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's somewhere in here, and it doesn't actually stop here. It goes on mm -hmm. the entire lifespan, so the whole building can be somewhere here. And yeah. Okay. So you could do basically some bootstrapping there in that part, and then do whatever you want in yeah. the container. Yeah. We yeah we are agnostic on what teams want to do with it. Yeah. Uh, we just provide the containers. And if they want to build a Java application or something else, then... Yeah, I was thinking, what, what, what if your artifact is actually an image for another container? And yeah, then you can push it to Nexus. Yeah. If you want the Nexus, yeah, we use Nexus to pull our images. And they can, of course, of course uh, pitch in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. I think it was first. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you have all the automatic tests in place? Because your team name is... Test and automation, but mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything about test. Uh, this is part of the eat our own dog food. Yeah. Uh, so yes, we should. Uh, <laughs> yes, we are going to, but no, we <laughs> have not. <laughs> <laughs> How <laughs> honest? <laughs> well, uh, question. Uh, how many teams do you have already using this? And or oh, a percentage? Oh, percentage. I don't know. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have one team that's almost 100% uh, committed to this platform. Yeah. Ditching every centralized, uh, or ditching the centralized Jenkins, XLD, and XLR. Yeah. Uh, and we have a lot of other teams uh, started starting to work with it. Okay. Um, how many? I don't have an exact number. And uh, do, do if, we, if we have a team using the centralized uh, instance of Jenkins XL deploy, if they are happy with that, you're still promoting that they migrate to this, or it's up to the team? Or uh, eventually, it's up to the team. Um, but it, in the end, it would be uh, when, that, when this Jenkins instance that we provide gets more mature and more flexible, uh, and the solution we offer is more stable, then we, yeah, we should. Yeah. Switch off the central. Be from CICD, uh, <laughs> advise CICD. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah. No, but I, I think you don't push people to do it if you promote it, like for, the, for Jenkins. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm working on part of the, uh, as part of the team which does the centralized uh, instances. And for Jenkins, new plugins are, are requests for that by all the different teams. Uh, we, we are a bit hesitated in and we, uh, the first I will guide them to see if, if this solution works for them. Because then they have a, a complete own control and can do everything with it what they want. Uh, but still we have to centralize instances. But in that way we promote to go into this way of working. Yeah, in, in the end we yeah. only want to have consolidated services where it's absolutely necessary. Uh, and mainly from a in intellectual mm. uh, property point of view. So it's Nexus, Git, Jira, um, because if people people tend to go away, <laughs> <laughs> and you want to have to, to have this intellectual property in house, and uh, on in all other cases, uh, the, the disadvantage of uh, consolidated services is they tend to be to end up as a compromise, and the compromise is a mm. place where nobody is really happy. It's not a Pareto optimum, so. That, that uh, uh, yeah, 
So we and we want people to have to be completely happy with the way they work and to be owner of their own destiny in this. Therefore, at at this moment, promoting, but in the end we will stop the centralized services. Sometime in. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, test. Uh, we have another session, or uh, because uh, uh, from a CI/CD perspective, there are a lot of test aspects as well. Uh, unit test, automated testing, integration test, performance. Any, any, any uh, view on that? I mean, something in pipeline or uh, the tools. How we you mean as we offer to customers, or we use ourselves? No, let's say, I mean, when this uh, piece is, I, I, I got uh, Jenkins and Excel mm -hmm. and all, this platform is ready for me. And uh, I'm, a, for example, Java developer or Node.js developer and all. I've created such an application and I want that also to be automated in that extent. Mm -hmm. So it is, you're leaving it to the specific developer to take care of these things their own or as a platform, uh, you want to uh, take those automation, piece of automation and create some instances or some scripts or something for them particular, one part uh, mm -hmm. for each technologies to quickly go ahead. Yeah, uh, and use it. if that is, if the automatic testing is already part of the process, um, and it's runnable, um, <coughs> let me put it this way, if the team uses already automated testing in their process and they want to migrate to the continuous delivery pipeline, um, they can of course create containers uh, for it or start containers which execute those tests and run it on the platform and just link it to Jenkins and mm -hmm. uh, start a Jenkins job if a team chooses to do so, which executes the test. Mm -hmm. What we are not now uh, offering from our team uh, specific test tools. There are some Rabobank central uh, test applications, for example, Auto LST. I don't know if it's familiar. It's uh, home bu built. It's home built. Of course. <laughs> so so you don't know Auto <laughs> LST, but it's really <laughs> special. Oops, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. But that's a, that's that's a, great. A, you love it. <laughs> that's a tool that a lot of people use, and we are. Uh, trying to make that available from a decentralized point of view. Yeah. Or it is already, maybe Henry can... Well, I've got a solution that you built it in Dowbuck and it's basically your framework around from the center load runner. And what it does is uh, it's being triggered by Jenkins and it, then it starts running, uh, preparing the environment if needed, uh, running the test, uh, uh, getting the results off the different servers and then analyzing the results and presenting it in a uh, centralized uh, view. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be triggered uh, now basically from any CICD pipeline as long as it has an API. So uh, it's something that we would like to deliver also as, an, uh, as a part of the CICD pipeline from TOS. Yeah, and you already uh, created the Jenkins plugin, uh, which is available and we are now in the process of making it available for teams to request by default. Yep. Uh, for monitoring other teams of login, what do you offer to team or it is up to the team? Sorry, can okay, you repeat the question? For monitoring other teams, the login, do you offer something to teams or it is up to the team? In order to do? In order to monitor the system, monitor the um, <laughs> Um, we don't have anything in place now. Um, of yeah, all I think all the, as I recall correctly, all the machines that you uh, request from CloudForms, all the Linux machines, uh, do have. Um, I think we'll have to look at the back. Have a Splunk full water installed uh, by default. So you can uh, link it up to a central Splunk instance to monitor your servers, your hardware, basically. There is not yet a monitoring solution that logs your container, or uh, container logging, no, there is not yet, but uh, there has no, been. There's some basic monitoring logging and ratio as well. Yeah, yeah, I just for go for the phone system. Yeah, but we don't aggregate all the logging and, uh, no, okay. not yet. Do you expose the Docker socket in the uh, uh, Jenkins master and slaves? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can. Yes, I think we do. Edge, where is it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, you can check out the Jenkins Compose or Docker Compose. Da -da -da. Oh, this is a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you, maybe if you select the text, it switches. To yeah, that's strange that it has. Yeah, yeah, better. Yeah, you okay. can expose it in there. So, do you also have cleanup scripts for the Docker images and? The Docker uh, no. Yeah, they they are there, and um, that's a nice example. The team that's already 100% committed to this platform, they have, and we are doing some cross communication to. Um, have them share it and of course they're willing to but we have to yeah pick a time for it and share it and then make it uh, generic so other teams can also use this cleanup and yeah really make use of the yeah, knowledge sharing one team one team creates something cool <coughs> other teams should be able to use that okay. yeah. If there aren't any other questions, then I am finished with my uh, demo <laughs> and presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that.